and welcome to my first educational video that I've produced. What we're going to look at today is uh, the malaria life cycle uh, and how the parasite replicates inside both humans and mosquitoes. And then we're going to look at some of the treatments that we use to actually prevent malaria and some other measures that can be used to prevent the life cycle from occurring. Um, as I'm sure you're all aware, malaria is a vector borne disease and is one of the most common parasitic and definitely one of the most dangerous parasitic diseases in the world at present. And as I'm sure you're aware, you actually contract malaria from a mosquito bite. But it's not any old mosquito, it is the female Anopheles mosquito which carries the disease. Okay, so a bite from an infected one of those can possibly lead to malaria. And what actually happens when an infected mosquito bites is six up to ten sporozoites are injected into the host's bloodstream, to the human's bloodstream, and I've represented these by these little white objects here in the blood. So the way you spell it is sporozoite. Okay, there's a lot of um, terms used which are quite complicated to describe the malaria cycle. Okay. What those sporozoites do is actually travel through the blood to the liver, okay, as represented here, and try and get through the for cells, and then they actually become this infected liver cell here. Okay, once it's in there, the actual parasite itself can do one of two things. Firstly, and what happens in most cases, is actually it starts to replicate and it replicates asexually via mitosis, much in a similar way to a virus would do, into something that's known as a schizont. Okay, a liver schizont in particular. And what that contains is thousands of copies of what are known as um, merozoites later on in the system. And it tends to take around five to seven days for that to occur. However, in some cases, with particular forms of malaria, it doesn't always form the schizont, it forms this little representation here, which is known as a hypnozoite. Okay. And the clue is in the name, it's basically a dormant cell that is infected with the malaria parasite. And that can occur with two species of malaria, Plasmodium vivax and Plasmodium ovale and basically they're benign malarias that cause relapsing disease basically what happens is the hypnozoite may lay dormant for a number of months and then it will be triggered into action by something and then basically turn into one of the liver schizonts okay which will then release um, the malaria parasite into the bloodstream and cause quite a relapsing disease okay so eventually what happens is this cell here it bursts and release is thousands of merozoites into the bloodstream. And then occurs the second stage of malaria replication in humans, which is the blood stage. So basically what happens is these merozoites will actually infect the red blood cells here. And what tends to happen is a specific change occurs inside the erythrocyte itself and it becomes, looks like that cell above, and it's something known as a ring trophozoite. Okay, that's specifically, it's something that you can look for in blood films when you're looking to diagnose malaria. After that, it then develops into a schizont, but a blood schizont, rather than a liver schizont as before. Okay, and what they are is they're actually very sticky tend to stick to the side of capillaries and because of that they can cause neuropsychiatric effects in the brain so it will reduce blood flow to the brain and you can see things such as seizures in late onset malaria. After a little while what tends to happen is 8 to 32 merozoites are released from the blood cell that's been infected okay and they can infect extra red blood cells in turn okay and the whole time period for this stage is 24 to 48 hours okay 
in most species it is 20 it's actually 48 hours it's only a uh, plasmodium nullsii which is the zoonosis where you'll see this stage occur in 24 hours okay so it tends to take that it builds up in the blood and then you start to get all the symptoms of malaria such as low hemoglobin headache fever because the red blood cells are actually being lysed by the malaria parasite itself if that was all the malaria parasite did it wouldn't be a very successful parasite and that's because it would kill someone fairly quickly within the matter of a couple of weeks um, and they wouldn't be able to get out of a dead host and wouldn't be able to replicate in future so what happens in some cells which are these ones over here is actually things are formed that are called gametocytes okay which is the sexual stage of reproduction of the parasite so this little one on the left is a representation of the male on the right a representation of the female what occurs with these gametocytes is another Anopheles mosquito will take a bite on a human to feed and they'll ingest the gametocytes and they'll travel to um, the uh, digestive tract of the mosquito itself and they'll start to look something like this which is where fertilization occurs Okay, and that's where the males meet with the mate with the females, and then what occurs is something called an oocyte. Okay, what happens from the oocyte is basically more sporozoites are released after a short incubation period, and those travel to the salivary gland of the mosquito. It bites another human and the life cycle starts all over again okay so that's the life cycle so what can we actually do to um, prevent the the uh, malaria parasite from replicating or to treat it or to prevent it okay so the first major thing we can do is over here and that's bite prevention okay we do that by a number of methods so actually trying to avoid times a day when the mosquito is active which is from dusk till dawn we can also look at insecticide preg impregnated nets we can also look at things like deep sprays which are mosquito repellents to try and prevent them from biting and that's a really good way it's much better to prevent disease than to try and cure it okay but then if that doesn't work we also use chemoprophylaxis so we use drugs okay and there's two major categories of chemoprophylaxis there's the first one which is known as causal prophylaxis okay and that actually attacks the liver stage okay which lasts five to one seven days and the main drug we have to use that is a tobaclone okay and that basically prevents these schizonts from forming because it's a causal prophylaxis you only you need to take it for about a week after you've left the malaria endemic area okay to prevent any liver cells that have been infected from turning into schizonts itself okay however there is a second form of prophylaxis and that's known as suppressive prophylaxis and that works on the liver stage okay and basically what that does is prevent the malaria parasite from using hemoglobin as an energy source it basically um, leads to build up of toxic super oxide ions which uh, basically kill the parasite okay and there's a quite a few drugs in that category most of the most common are the quinines so they include drugs like chloroquine methylquine okay also other drugs that work in this category are doxycycline okay which works in a slightly different manner to the quinines but again it prevents um, the replication of the sizzons and the other one that works in that area is proguanil and that works 
by preventing the action of dihydrofolate reductase. Okay, and they're the three major classes of suppressive prophylaxis. Now there is a little problem there, and that's this little uh, pesky blighter here, which is the hypnozoite. Okay, there's only one drug that we have at the moment to treat that, and that's known as primaquine. Okay, and that's particularly useful for anyone who has Plasmodium vivax or Plasmodium ovale, they're the only malaria parasites that actually cause the hypnozoites. So that actually treats them about a two week course or so, and then that will prevent any relapses of malaria. Okay, so in summary, the malaria life cycle is pretty complex, and we tend to have three targets that we can use. Firstly, by prevention. Secondly, causal prophylaxis in the liver stage in humans. And thirdly, is suppressive prophylaxis on the red blood cell stage in humans. There's been a lot of research recently into vaccines. Um, however, nothing's come up more than 50% effective. And actually at Keele, in the biology department, we have a lot of people that are researching into releasing uh, sort of um, infertile mosquitoes into the environment and actually looking at the vector-borne stage of the disease to prevent it in the future. Thank you very much.